Houston, Texas. Houston is the acknowledged corporate world headquarters of the oil and gas industry. Virtually all major oil and gas related companies are based in Houston. The past few years have been difficult ones for the oil and gas industry and it shows here in Houston. But there is a bright spot. The brightest spot on Houston skyline in the newly constructed Heritage Plaza is the new corporate headquarters of Great Western Resources. Great Western has managed to survive the oil industry storms and to grow in just five years from a $1,000 company to a corporation worth more than $300 million. Great Western is one of the few major independent oil and gas corporations that has shown growth in recent years. Its president, Dan Pena Sr., is committed to seeing that growth continue. Recently, Great Western held an open house to show its new offices and bring together those people that made Great Western grow. This program will introduce you to some of those key people and present their opinions of Great Western and its phenomenal success. First, a few words with Dan Pena Sr., Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer of Great Western Resources. I started with uh, less than $1,000 when I founded the company. And I come from uh, working class parents. And um, so I didn't start this company uh, with a great deal of money. Most of the people that I was raised with uh, turned out to be doctors, lawyers, dentists, and uh, all from working class, but uh, they went to school. And I didn't take uh, school seriously, although I, I did ultimately graduate with honors from a uh, California university. Um, I think that uh, the real, real turning point for me was when I was in the military, went to OCS during our great Vietnam conflict and came out. I was an intelligence officer with NATO, NATO headquarters. And I came back to school, and I came back to school with a vengeance. And uh, I think that was really the beginning. And um, I've been fairly successful at whatever I've done in the uh, two or three endeavors. Well, when I was with Bear Stearns in the uh, middle 70s, I saw oil go from uh, $6 a barrel to $12 a barrel. And it didn't take a uh, Harvard MBA to figure out that the great fortunes were being made. So I was fortunate enough to be offered a position with one of our, at that time, corporate finance clients. And I went to work for a company called Kennedy Industries. And I was made an offer I couldn't refuse. And within a year's time, the name of the company was changed to JPK, which stood for Jensen Pena Kennedy. And I was a major shareholder. Um, I subsequently, on January the 7th, 1982, lost a proxy fight and was unceremoniously thrown out on my derriere. And I founded Great Western Resources, as we know it now, on Friday the 13th, July 1982. To be more accurate, we started the company with $820. And um, when we founded the company, uh, Mr. Harrison, Mr. Soliday, who's recently passed away, and myself, our goal was to be the 50th largest exploration production company in the United States. In 1982, that company was Pennzoil. And as you've probably read, Pennzoil is a lot bigger than the 50th largest company in the United States now. And if it wins its lawsuit against Texaco, it could probably be one of the top five or six. Uh, our goal is still to be the 50th largest. Uh, this year, we will break into probably the top 80s. And uh, now that we are also a natural resource company, I mean, truly, with the coal acquisition, uh, we are one of the largest uh, coal companies, coal operating companies in the United States as well. Well, originally we started with drilling funds, uh, which were the rage in the late 70s and early 80s. Then we went public in August of 1984, and we went public in the UK. We're public on the UK market, which is the equivalent of the uh, New York Stock Exchange. We're also public on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange, which is uh, by way of uh, coincidence, the oldest stock exchange in the world. Most people don't realize the first stock exchange that was ever developed was in Amsterdam. But there was a window of opportunity that existed in London from about February of 84 through September of 84. And Mark Harrison, uh, who's now vice chairman and co-founder and uh, head of corporate development, saw that window, actually convinced me I was against going public. I thought it was too soon. But he uh, badgered it me and uh, the other directors long enough to finally convince us to do it, and it was the right thing to do. Our timing was absolutely perfect. Well, unfortunately, because the company has become so large, it's very difficult for me to go and be able to touch, feel, uh, and uh, interface with every employee. 
important thing is for the top five or six people uh, in the company to be able to have five or six people, to be able to have those five or six people, to be able to be like disciples, to be able to bring down to uh, a secretary in our field office in Utah uh, what the company's all about. The company was based on four or five precepts, of which none of which have really changed in the last five years. Uh, one of which, as I've already uh, mentioned, is to try to be the 50th largest BMP company in the United States. Uh, another one is to not only at the top, but filter down, as Mr. Reagan would say, all the riches of the company so even the smallest secretary in our smallest field office benefits as the company benefits. Uh, too often you see most of the profits and the uh, perks and the goodies taken off at the top 10% level. Uh, we base this company on one of the most important precepts is if the company makes money, all employees make money. From the receptionist to me, if the company doesn't make money, then you just get paid your salary. And our salaries are not as high as some of our competitors. Maybe that's why over a thousand exploration production companies have gone out of business in the last four or five years. But we have people, as hopefully you'll be interviewing later on this evening, that took massive pay cuts to come to work here. And I think it's important to ask them, why would you take a 20 or 40 percent pay cut uh, with no contract to come to work for Great Western? And hopefully you'll get, the, get a flavor for that. The third precept this company was based on was the fact that we take pride in that none of the founders were oil men. Uh, all three of us were, uh, were actually finance men. Mark Harrison was a partner in the largest law firm in the world. Uh, and um, Charlie Soliday was a partner with Coopers and Library, one of the big eight accounting firms. I was from Wall Street, and uh, the precepts that we use generically to run the company, you could run a widget company, a real estate company, or any kind of company. And we take a lot of pride in that. And we never got bogged down with the ideas that we uh, were petroleum engineers or geologists. Now, more recently, we've added the technical expertise, especially with the uh, addition of Gary Loveless, who is the president of one of the companies we acquired, LMB, who's a petroleum engineer by education, one of the best in the business and he has headed up our technical team and he runs our exploration production company. So we have grown to a size now that we need that technical expertise, but it, initially at our embryonic stages we didn't have that and we think that we were lucky that we didn't have oil expertise as it were. It's important for me as chief executive who normally gets all the credit, I also get all the blame when things go wrong, well right now I'm getting a lot of credits. Uh, that aren't necessarily, uh, or should be, I should say, shared with a lot of other people. We have 1,400 employees. We have 15 or 20 key executives that, without their assistance, without their perseverance, without their uh, unswerving loyalty, uh, Great Western wouldn't be where it is today. It's to give those people credit. It's also to give the employees, now that there are 1,400, that I may never get an opportunity to sit down and talk to, to see something like this and to be able to have pride and, uh, and feel good about the fact that they are part of an organization that is far, as far as we can tell, the fastest growing natural resource company uh, in 1986 and uh, perhaps the fastest growing natural resource company in the last five years. These offices, this new corporate headquarters, the uh, Great Western Resources, was the brainchild of my former partner and co-founder, uh, Charlie Soliday, who recently passed away January this year. This room and the company are, are legacies that, that, that Charlie's left us. And, uh, because he was a benchmark of excellence, we feel that uh, for all time eternal that our boardroom will always be called this. We hope it makes him happy. Oh, they never considered not succeeding in that. We had a really good team. I think it was important that uh, one of the things I said earlier on uh, when I was uh, being interviewed that uh, without the support of our wife, Cindy, and uh, Maureen for Mark, and Linda for myself, uh, they never once were, they were flinched, they were unswerving in their support. And uh, uh, as I said uh, earlier, the, uh, the company wouldn't be here today without without Charlie, and, uh, and without Charlie, 
as uh, as far as Cindy was concerned in her support and uh, that's why we thought tonight was important and uh, as difficult as this is um, you know it's it's important and uh, and because Great Western is is living Charlie is living in, in our own minds and hearts The open house reception was quite an affair. Fine music and gourmet food lent an impressive air to the evening, and all who were seeing the offices for the first time were duly impressed. observations from a group of respected members of the business community outside Great Western Resources. These gentlemen have all seen Great Western grow and prosper. We'll hear their opinions of Great Western as a corporation, Dan Pena, and what the future might be for Great Western as it continues to grow. I also think that Great Western started to increase its base of oil and gas and coal reserves at a very good time when the market is at what we think are historic lows, Great uh, Western is coming and has, has, has acquired significant holdings both in oil and gas and in coal. And the upside potential is, is, is very, very great given, uh, given the base that they have built currently and I know will continue to build. Well, they'll be much larger. Um, they most likely will have diversified into some other areas that they aren't in currently. But I do see their basis uh, in coal, the, the grounding in coal and oil and gas as being uh, the primary uh, cornerstones of, of their businesses in the forward. He had to convince merchant bankers, he had to convince investors, he had to convince uh, oil people on this side to uh, to believe in what he was doing. And all of this happening at the same time, and truly with what we used to call in the, we used to call blue sky, you know, because you really don't have a property. And at that time, we found it extremely difficult to buy properties. A little bit easier now, but there's less money now. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he really, he had an ability to work with the merchant banks, to work with the people who had the money, to work on this side of the ocean and find those properties and make it all happen very quickly. I would not cut short the support he had because uh, Soliday uh, wore his clothes out from the inside. He was a remarkable worker and, and uh, with great drive and enthusiasm. And it was Soliday that welded people like me to the company. Uh, it was, uh, and of course, Mark Harrison, take nothing from him, but bands magnetism. We all go out of our way to go to his birthday party in Scotland. And it cost me well, $10. I think that Great Western will do well in any endeavor they attempt because they're a close-knit organization. They've got uh, very talented and very professional management at top, and uh, uh, I think that's where it all begins. Plus, they have a very personable leader in Mr. Pena, and of course, Mark Harrison, and uh, a group of uh, other corporate executives that I've met. I think it's a team effort. They were in there buying their production and their companies while the uh, industry was looking at 9 10 and $11 oil when, uh, when in-ground reserves were probably selling at 5 and 6 and 4 and 3 who knows. And uh, when the Saudis would ratchet the price up to 30 40 and $50 a barrel in the 90s, as well documented in the media today, they'll kill them. They've acquired some interest in coal, they have some interest in oil, <coughs> they have some interest in natural gas. Uh, to the extent Dan and Mark are planning to expand into other fields, 
uh, the company will be protected in just about any kind of economic climate. And the climate in the way it's being run now, uh, I think that kind of company can survive any kind of economic shock. It's the companies have been collapsing now, or companies are overextended, poorly managed, and with a lot of fat. You're not going to have that problem with these two guys. Dan Kenyon once said that he was going to make his company the next Exxon. Uh, and at the time, that seemed like more of a pipe dream, and now uh, I'm not so sure. Un unquestionably, his personality tends to uh, be the reason why it moves forward. Because when you think back, the, the company was floated at a time when the oil market was actually peaking. And it was only in the, really the, the two years after that that he managed to acquire other companies. Um, and build up the company to a very large company, culminating in the deal which he did at the end of last year. Um, and without his drive, there's no doubt they wouldn't have uh, managed to do that, in which case the company would bust. Well, you know, there's always, in, in periods of uh, <coughs> slowdown or depression, certain people that succeed. And th these people are going to succeed, <coughs> excuse me, under any conditions. And I believe you've got a group of people here that uh, uh, their style, uh, that they would su succeed at anything they uh, attempted. And, uh, they did enter the uh, energy business at a uh, time when it was down, uh, but they have succeeded. Uh, uh, and I, like I said before, I think these people would succeed in anything that they try. The firm I'm with, we are just very pleased to be associated with them. It's uh, exciting, it's fun, uh, and that, that's what makes our life uh, really very interesting. We were involved, and I was involved with the company from the moment it came to the market in London. Uh, and we've sort of watched it grow through difficult circumstances and we've had some part in that growth in helping Dan and his colleagues to grow the company. And uh, uh, we have just a very good relationship with them, as well as uh, finding it uh, rewarding business and interesting business. It's also very nice business too because uh, we like the people and we enjoy their company. And I think we all get on very well uh, and uh, you know, I and my colleagues at Greenwells have a great deal of, of affection for Dan and his team. Well, when Dan came to the market, um, and we heard earlier on this evening about uh, uh, he and his colleagues' dream to, uh, or vision of becoming one of the top 50 exploration companies in the States. And, and I suppose if you'd uh, said that when they came to the market, there wouldn't have been very many people who would have believed it. Uh, but uh, the success they've achieved against a very difficult background suggests that uh, that's one shouldn't be too skeptical about it. And I think they have got. Uh, uh, with the team they've got and the opportunities available to them or the opportunities they'll seek out and find because that's the way they are. I think they have got uh, a chance of making the business really a very major force in the market over here. Dan Pena has had a colorful past. As you have heard, Mr. Pena has no lack of energy and equally no lack of personality. During his years in the real estate business, on Wall Street, and now in the oil business, Dan Pena has developed many loyal friendships. Few will disagree, much of great Western success is due to Dan Pena and his personality. To get a unique insight to Dan Pena, We'll hear first from a few of his close friends, then Linda Pena, his wife of 14 years. Now, I remember his company in his home in Palos Verdes, him and his secretary, in a bedroom they had converted to, you know, with office equipment. You just like I said, you hope and pray that they could put something together, which is what they were trying to do. There was no Mark Harrison then, there was no Charlie Soliday, none of these people were involved at that time. It was just him and a secretary, a telephone, and whatever office, I guess he had a computer or whatever else was up there. And um, here we are. Here. <laughs> I just think it's unlimited. You know, he's. He has a vision. Believe me, this is there's a plan and a design here. This is not just tripping around and um, you know, oh, you know, well, there's a design and a plan, and I'm sure there's there's no limit in his mind. Mm -hmm. I own the Gateway Motel in Graham, and when Dan started, I think it was his first drill adventure. It was in Graham, Texas. 
And so they practically lived in my motel for a long while. Well, see, I knew Dan before he was with Great Western. He was with another company when I knew him. And probably one of the first things that made him stand in my, out in my mind was that the people who had known him for a long while respected him, and there was a lot of loyalty there. And I, so I think this, he's not always changing people like a lot of people do, you know. He's loyal to the people, and I'm sure then they're in return are loyal to him. So some of the people who came into the motel and were associated with him in the other business he was in had known him for a lot of years and were still working with him. So I think that says a whole lot for him. Well, I've known Dan for a long time, and he's very creative, very imaginative, and uh, he gets in there and takes a shot. He's a very personable fellow, and uh, you know the only way you can succeed in this thing is to share it. And that's something a lot of people have trouble understanding, and Dan doesn't have that problem. Well, a lot of people kind of like consolidate their position and not spread it around, and you don't build much on that. You can make it one time, but you don't. You can't grow, and. Uh, so I think that this, what's happened lately with the, uh, the company and its incredible growth, you know, in the last, uh, what, three years, has been as direct as all of the power of the personality behind it. They are in a true adventure, and that's the only way I can explain it. Um, I think my husband and the group of people who work for him are going to be able to fulfill a dream in their lifetime. And there are many people who dream about a dream and already have put fences up around it and have already said, oh, I can't do that. Whereas my husband knows no fences and the people that work for him are terribly dedicated. He is the one with the dream. He is the one that has the genius. But they are the ones who, who make it happen. In today's society, he is a very rare commodity. Um, he is basically, I guess that's what I'd want to say, the um, Don Quixote, the one who's fighting the windmills. And he truly believes it, and he truly does it. There are a lot of people who talk that way and don't back up. And if you're a per person who's fortunate enough to, not everyone can believe, not everyone can have that faith. Uh, but the people that have worked for him, they have, they have given that faith. And uh, as we talked before, Charlie Saladay, who we feel is very much part of this company, was one of those people who, from the time I think he and I understood my husband, I think from the first time he met him, he knew this was someone that he was going to have a relationship with and believe totally. And, of course, Charlie had a wife, three children, and that was what was so special. He, was, he had a, a very, very good job with Cooper's and Lyburn. And my husband, at the time that he was working in that bedroom, had said, I, I basically can't even pay you a salary, and I think it would be wonderful if you left your company and we paid you nothing and you left your wife for a while. And, 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 and Charlie said, yes, I believe you. And Cindy has a relationship, as Dan and I do, that she was able to say, yes, I, I believe in it too. And uh, that, I mean, not only do we feel a loss of, of Charlie, but also the fact that we were so fortunate to have him in our life, that that is something that not only for, for us, for our children, for his children, for his wife, I mean, that is the type of quality that goes on forever. And we were just so blessed to have him in our life, and that's how we feel tonight, too. And Dan, in his life, is trying to be the very best business person, build a business that is something that people look up to, not only for its, um, not, I, what do I want to say, not, not so much how much money it makes, but just a good, solid business, something that that you feel at the end of the day that you, you've done something that's worthwhile, that you've enjoyed doing it. And there was a young man that we met tonight that's just recently come to Great Western. And he said that he'd worked for, for several, several companies. 
and that he had a feeling of excitement being here. And I think that's how a lot of people feel. Uh, so whether it, it becomes bigger, which I'm sure it will, I hope that that side of it, I hope that excitement is always maintained. And uh, when Dan is, is, is gone, the company will, will be an example and will live on and still have that type of leadership. People at Great Western are young, ambitious, and extremely dedicated. Great Western won't continue to grow unless its people continue to work at the level and pace they have maintained in the past. One can get a fine impression of the ambition and dedication of Great Western people by hearing from a few of its own. Let's listen to some of the fine people of Great Western Resources Houston Corporate Headquarters. Having represented Great Western for a couple of years, I knew their history, their business history. I knew Mr. Pena's method of doing business, and I also knew Mark and Charlie very well. And uh, I believe that there was more risk staying with the law firm career-wise than there was coming with Great Western. It was just a great opportunity, and uh, Mr. Pena believes in growth, and, uh, and so do I, so it seemed like it was a good fit. The senior management at Great Western across the board all comes from a similar background. I don't think any of us were born with a silver spoon. And I think it, it lends a little to the company that we all are trying to build something here. I mean, individually we're trying to progress, obviously, but I think the company benefits from all the senior managers having the, uh, uh, the concept of hard work, growth built into their, their lifestyles pre-Great Western. It just, it's just run over here and then Dan being the driver that he is, mm -hmm. I think he's just uh, using the tools that he has in the company. Mark, Dan, uh, Charlie when Charlie was here, Bob, everybody's just really gun ho you know, and, and I think everybody really wants to do well. And I just, lo I love it. I mean, I really enjoy working for Great Western. We don't have to live with the obsolete practices that to a certain extent created a situation where certain investors were not given any bottom line income. We can benefit from the economies of scale and yet we don't have to live with the practices that beat down the industry in the last few years. I like dealing with uh, the management structure as it exists today and uh, there is a free exchange of ideas and I feel that's a real positive benefit to not only the investors but the uh, people that I work with day to day, the supporting staff. They're all very comfortable with their position in the company and wanting to move forward. Energy. Uh, energy of people mostly of these people. Um, there, there's a lot of young people in the company. It's a young company and we work hard. And we know that it's only going to grow if we give it 100%. If it takes 110, we're, we're willing to do it. When I, I talk to people, my, my big line has always been, we're not run by engineers. We're run by entrepreneurs, financiers, who have a head for money and know how to use it well. And I, I, I have to put all my trust into those men. The best way to understand Great Western resources and the reasons for its success is to listen to the men at the top, those who head departments, and sit at the board have the best insights. Here, comments from the men who lead Great Western Resources. Mr. Pena uh, does not send management in or try to manage from a foreign base. 
uh, if the operation had not been successful, he probably wouldn't have bought it. If it hadn't been successful and he had a purchase anyway, he would have changed management. He wouldn't have gone with a loser. Uh, Mr. Pena is different than the other oil and gas company for a simple reason is he tries to let it run from the area that it should be run from, and that's at the roots of the, of the operation, not from Houston or not from Denver, like a lot of the companies are trying to run their operation on a diversified manner when they go from oil and gas to coal or vice versa. And I see the Great Western uh, becoming, I think what Mr. Pena told me in the early days that I met him, that uh, he wants to be a Fortune 200 company. And I see it headed in that direction. This last acquisition certainly was a big one. And I know that they're looking at uh, opportunities in oil and gas. And I know we're looking at opportunities in coal. And we have one just about ready to un unfold. When you prove yourself to people, as quick as he's proven himself to people like me, you know, uh, and like I say, I saw him in action, and I know that he does what he says he'll do, and I have total confidence in him, and that's that's quick. A lot of times it takes years to develop that, but with Mr. Dan Pena, with not only myself, but a lot of people back in my neck of the woods have the utmost respect for him and Great Western Company. Well, Great Western's always uh, been pretty picky about uh, prospects and properties. Uh, the biggest thing, of course, would be that uh, they've never incurred any any uh, debt and debt service. That's the big difference. Uh, also, uh, in hindsight, the timing was pretty good. Um, uh, a, a great number of the companies that are that are belly up now are, are that way because they went out uh, banking on uh, on uh, forty dollar or better crude prices, and uh, Great Western never did. So I see, him, uh, I see Great Western heading uh, uh, pretty much in the same direction that they've been doing, uh, uh, moving on to bigger and better things in the oil industry, as well as diversing, diversifying in other energy areas like coal. Um, there appear to be some, some real opportunities in, in the coal industry. I don't know that I've ever met anyone any more positive than Dan. And like you can hear him outside the door, uh, no telling how far down the hall. Certainly, he's in command of uh, of anyone and everyone whenever he's in the room. Mm -hmm. Well, being a financial person, I think that uh, it's much more important to have a financial person running a company, particularly in today's times, than it is to have some uh, geologist or engineer uh, sitting out there hoping to have their wells drilled and, uh, you know, without regard to the financial responsibilities that go on with operating the company. So you know, I think it's just a, a wonderful company to be able to be associated with. I've, uh, I've seen a lot of companies struggle for survival. We've looked at a lot of them, you know, in, in, in our efforts to acquire properties. And it's very comforting to be on the Great Western team. Yeah, I think uh, Great Western has a strong management team, has uh, made appropriate moves in this market, and uh, consequently are seeing the results of that. Unlike many companies, as you pointed out, they've prospered, and I think will continue to do so. Great Western is an acquisition mode company, and, and uh, we hope to make a, a number of other acquisitions before the end of the year. I, I think that uh, when you have professionals uh, like we have in this organization that that uh, those people um, see an opportunity to grow with Great Western, opportunity for themselves, and and it's more than just a, a top-oriented company. And by that I mean we have people uh, in middle management and lower management, uh, the people that uh, that uh, a lot of times do not get recognized that uh, are very capable kinds of individuals, and so when you have that strength that permeates the company from top to the field operations, then it makes for an overall successful company. In all aspects of business, timing is a big factor, and I think uh, you know, Dan's timing as far as uh, some of the strategic moves he's made you know, relative to uh, this company, 
and, uh, you know, the acquisitions they've made to date, you know, have been at a good time, and, <clears throat> and I think that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, he has a lot of vision and he has a lot of, uh, uh, you know, he has a lot of financial backing, uh, and he moves a lot of people out in, in various credit markets, uh, you know, in London and throughout the States here that, uh, have a lot of confidence in the man, you know, and, uh, and it, you know, it takes a lot of confidence together with a lot of vision and the, the capability of putting together a good management team underneath you, you know, to build a good company. So, uh, but we knew that to the extent the prices ever did come down, people who had a lot of debt were going to have trouble. So we decided when we first went public not to incur any debt, and that's what's kept us out of trouble because you can always control your costs if you don't have fixed debt service. And we were able to do that and operate with low overheads, which meant low salaries to ourselves, and unfortunately for all of our employees to them as well. But they persevered through the tough times, and as a result, they're all doing very well, and as a company does well. I think without Dan, there wouldn't be a Great Western in the early years. I think fortunately, as the company grows, and as unfortunately we've had to see with Charlie's death, is that we're to the size and the point now where each one of us individually becomes less important the ongoing operations of this company. But even with that, without Dan, the company would suffer. Uh, it would go on, it would make money, but it wouldn't go on and expand at the level it's going to, we think, with Dan running this company. But Dan's a very interesting individual because most people who don't know him, or at least know him well, think that Dan is a very flashy individual, very outspoken, all of which is true. But he's also the most conservative, careful businessman that I've ever met. Uh, my background is such that I've always thought I was very conservative. Our professional advisors, some of who are in this room with us now, also are very conservative. None of them is conservative as Dan. So when you look to see what Dan is trying to build and where we're trying to build the company, what he's trying to build is a monument to himself and the rest of our shareholders that our children and families can look back on and be proud of down the road, but in a conservative, careful manner so that we don't jeopardize or risk what we've developed up to this point. We don't think we have any limit. We have certain goals over the next three, five, ten years. Uh, I think that Dan and myself are looking to a point nine years from now where we've built this company into a two or three billion dollar asset company that we can look back on, be proud of, have some very talented young people, who, some of whom are in the company now, others whom we'll bring in over the years who can take over and run this company with us overseeing it. Uh, we don't think there's a limit to the future for this company. We have eight and a half years of our ten-year plan, um, which coincides with my 50th birthday. Um, I would say that uh, in eight and a half years, we'll probably have something on the order of magnitude of 20 to 30,000 employees. Um, we will probably be international. We will be in at least one or two other natural resources. Uh, could be lumber. Um, I think that the the prognostications that you see about the oil and gas business will have less and less effect on us the larger we get. Uh, I think that uh, we may not very well be headquartered in Houston. We may be in New York. We may be in London. Uh, I believe that uh, I will probably not be president of the company by that time. Uh, and I am most likely uh, at that time, or right about that time, I will probably step aside and, uh, and, and, and pro not retire, but probably do something else. Following the general open house, Mr. Pena hosted a smaller gathering of selected guests at Houston's Hyatt Regency Hotel. The group was treated to dancing and a selection of desserts prepared by the hotel staff.
Later in the evening, Mr. Pena presented an informal talk to those gathered. He spoke of those who had helped Great Western along the way and gave his thoughts on the future of the company. Mr. Dan Pena. One, I want to thank all the professionals and some of the Porter professionals that represent us. Our bankers, our lawyers, our accountants, our engineers, both petroleum and mining, our stockbrokers, our merchant bankers, etc., etc. Because without their support, we wouldn't be here today and we wouldn't be a viable and burgeoning company in natural resources. Um, we were founded on July 13, 1982, when oil was approximately 36 or $35 a barrel and uh, with $820. We are now a $310 million company. Oil has bounced off 8 or $10 and we are back to 18 or $19. But without, without the support of those professionals, we wouldn't be here. Because in times gone by, as some of our lawyers, not Johnson and Swanson necessarily, but Finley Cumble, who's represented tonight, uh, we paid our lawyers and our accountants at that time one time a year whether we needed to or not. And basically, I see Bud Grawl is laughing over there, who's one of our bankers now, one of our more friendly bankers. Uh, we paid our professionals at that time one time a year whether we needed to or not. And basically, we rode them like banks. And we appreciate that, and that's why we're very, very loyal to the professionals that represented us four or five years ago. It's hard to believe that the company is, will be five years old this July, uh, four years and nine months right now, approximately. And it's hard to believe that the company was founded in what is now the nursery of our summer home, my wife's, my summer home in Palos Verdes, with two people. And which was my secretary at that time myself, and then joined by Charlie Soliday and Mark Harrison, and uh, soon four or five employees. And when we went public in um, August of 84, we had, I think, 16 or 17 employees. And now we have 1,400. It's really hard to believe. And if it wasn't for the professionals and the, many of the people in this room this evening, that wouldn't have happened. And I'm thankful, and I, I want to take this opportunity to say that uh, without your support, it, it wouldn't have happened. Mark, myself, and Charlie, who passed away in January, uh, we had a dream. And the professionals, rightly or wrongly, supported us. They believed in our dream. And we'll never forget that. And that's why we still do business with certain lawyers, or law firms, I should say, and certain accounting firms. Because no matter how big we get, um, I don't think that'll ever pass. I don't think that that feeling of gratitude will ever pass. Uh, subsequent to that, we have added new relationships with new law firms, new accounting firms, and new merchant bankers, new investment bankers, etc. But those original firms will never forget. And uh, as long as I'm with Great Western, God willing, I'll be there a long, long time. But uh, we'll never forget that support that we got. For all the people that have joined us recently, like the Coal Enterprise, Clyde Gons, I love coal, Clyde. <laughs> Clyde, I mean, I love coal. I can almost, I can't even remember how, why I got no own gas business. Uh, I, I love coal. Gary. Okay. And Gary Loveless, who, without his professional expertise and his rocket scientist, that I like to call him, I mean, uh, our, our oil and gas business probably wouldn't be anywhere near where it is today. And Judy, his lovely wife. Gary has uplifted with his staff our oil and gas expertise. Like, I mean, we feel that we can compete with anybody. And uh, for the new additions, thanks, hon. Yeah. 
and uh, with Bob McCurry on the accounting side and and uh, finance side and the new additions of Bill Phillips. And uh, we're very, very fortunate. I mean, we got so many bright people. I'm so, you know, we're very, very lucky. And uh, I'm, I'm very thankful. And as long as my wife, Linda, God bless her, continues to support me being gone 60, 70, 80 percent of the time, we're going to fulfill our goal as being one of the top 50 EMP companies in the, in, in the United States. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all, spouses, non-spouses, employees, non-employees, for all the support you've given me. God bless you. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you very much.